wrapping up the biggest retail week of the year comes Cyber Monday. Good evening, I'm Adrian Alvarez. And I'm Kagan Harsha. Cyber Monday may be the most convenient way to shop, but it's also an even easier way to lose your money to cyber thieves. Experts predict that online shopping will hit a record breaking $1.5 billion this year. And if you're willing to shell out some cash to contribute to this figure, here are some safety tips. The Better Business Bureau says shop trustworthy sites. Trusted sites will have a padlock on the bottom and will begin with HTTPS. Also, use a major credit card because under federal law, if your item doesn't show up, you are entitled to a refund. And if you're still apprehensive about cyber shopping on Cyber Monday, just head to an actual store. We spoke to locals about their take on cyber. We're doing that, like going into the actual place and buying it with actual money. What do you come here specifically to shop? Usually we do that from home. The BBB also says to shop for deals using a private protected Wi-Fi. El Paso's $1 million lottery winner has yet to come forward. The ticket was sold at the Valero store on Sunland Park in Cromo. Nationwide, there were 10 people who actually won $1 million. And one person in New York won $2 million. J.C. Almanza sold the winning ticket. He says the store was busy Saturday with others trying to buy their winning tickets. I think that it's a very good experience because I didn't, I haven't known uh, some person who won a million dollars. And the winning ticket, or there will be another jackpot drawing on Wednesday. Well, if you thought it was chilly today, just wait until tomorrow. Taking a look outside using our rooftop camera right now, not much you can see weather-wise, but how about those winds? And will the temperatures continue to dip, Chuck? Well, you know what? We were only chilly in the morning. This afternoon, we were above average and warm. That'll all change, though, tonight with the cold front. 72 the high in Deming, 75 in Juarez. And we see the winds right now, not bad, out of the northeast. They will be stronger. We'll see potential wind gusts on the western slopes of the area of mountains, anywhere from 35 to 40 plus miles per hour as this front moves in from the north and east. Overnight tonight is the wind. That'll be the big player. We can see winds close to 40 miles per hour on the west side of El Paso, 40 the overnight low, upper 30s in Las Cruces, mostly fair and 10 degrees cooler tomorrow. It'll feel cool all day. We'll take a closer look in just a couple minutes. All right, thank you, Chuck. Well, with Cyber Monday among us, law enforcement agencies are targeting cities aimed to scam consumers. News Channel 9's Dan O'Rourke live in our data center with more. Dan? Good evening, uh, Adrian. This shopper uh, is going to go online and make a legitimate website purchase. Here's the story about how ICE today shut down more than 100 illegitimate websites. This online shopper is going to a legitimate website. Her holiday buying experience shouldn't be a problem. But for countless others, Cyber Monday and the other 30 days leading to Christmas could be a nightmare. As dawn broke on Cyber Monday and the millions of Americans who have no interest in shopping malls went online, ICE and Homeland Security announced the seizure of these sites and 132 in all, convinced that these domains collect a shopper's money and send them cheap knockoff goods, counterfeits of the brand names the buyers think they're getting. El Paso agents shut down these four websites, all of them allegedly pushing phony sports jerseys. Uh, what they do is they purchase these items and they have somebody with the expertise authenticate the merchandise and if in fact it is counterfeit, they will go after the people who uh, are selling the, the fake, the pirated uh, merchandise on, on the internet. What should we look for when shopping online? What are the red flags that tell us this isn't right? We as consumers need to educate ourselves, first of all, especially if we're making a purchase online uh, of jewelry, something that we know that we're going to pay you know, uh, good money for. One of the websites that was uh, seized, for example, was a Tiffany & Company uh, domain. And if you look at, at the website, uh, it, it does not look at all like the authentic, like the genuine website. Federal agents also support what shopping experts always tell us. The riskiest purchase online is with a debit card. Up front, same as cash. Use credit and tell your credit card company later that you aren't paying for a Christmas gift that turned out to be a fake. 
There weren't that many actual arrests in the uh, ICE shutdown of these websites. Agents say first things first, get the websites down, go after the bad guys with the handcuffs later on. Live in the data center, Dan O'Rourke, News Channel 9. All right, thank you for that, Dan. Well, an elderly woman has died after a pedestrian accident this morning. The accident happened just after 8 on Delta Street in Buena Vista in the Lower Valley. Police say 71-year-old Maria Araujo crossed Delta Street when a Dodge Caravan hit her. Investigators say the woman was not in a crosswalk, and they don't believe alcohol or speed were factors in the crash. This is the 49th traffic death of the year. A Barino man is in jail accused of molesting a 3-year-old boy. 44-year-old Dionicio Carmona was arrested last Wednesday and charged with one count of sex, criminal sexual penetration. Doniana County Sheriff say Carmona was the primary caregiver for his girlfriend's three children. They say the three-year-old told his mother that Carmona had hurt him and that he was afraid to go home. According to court records, Carmona was charged with battery to a household member back in 2010, but that case was dismissed. Now, he's currently being held at the Donia Anna County Detention Center with a $100,000 bond. One of El Paso Zoo's most recognizable animals has died. Sonny the sea lion passed away last night due to complications from old age. The 26-year-old was born at the zoo back in June of 1986 and performed before crowds on an almost daily basis. He was also the first sea lion to teach zoo visitors about recycling by demonstrating how to put the correct items in a recycling bin. Sonny retired in May and was removed from the sea lion exhibit a few weeks ago when he started getting sick. He's 26 years old, which is quite old for, for a sea lion. Um, even sea lions in the wild do not typically even live that long. So he was quite old for a sea lion. Everybody knew Sonny. Whenever you would say El Paso Zoo, everybody thought about Sonny. Now everyone is encouraged to share their stories and photos of Sonny on the zoo's Facebook page. The ongoing drought has a lot of area farmers on edge. Water levels in Elephant Butte Lake have now dipped to their lowest levels in eight years. Many farmers rely on that lake and truth or consequences to irrigate their crops. Compounding the concerns, many forecasters are predicting lower than average snowpack this winter in the southern Rocky Mountains, which feeds that lake. A man accused of murdering his ex-wife, her boyfriend, and her daughter won't go on trial until nearly a year from now. Luis Javier Solis Gonzalez will face the death penalty in the capital murder case next November. He's accused of killing Marisol Zalivar, Eric de Santiago, and 13-year-old Cassandra Holt. Their bodies were found inside her East El Paso home back in May. Two of them suffered from stab wounds, and another suffered from blunt force trauma. A former Border Patrol agent will face his sentencing Thursday in a firearms conspiracy. 29-year-old Ricardo Montalvo and his girlfriend, Carla Gonzalez Ortiz, were accused of buying weapons and ammunition that they intended to sell to the drug cartels in Mexico. Montalvo admitted to recruiting others to buy guns for him. He faces up to five years in prison. The trial against Teresa Caballero was postponed today. Caballero's trial is on hold pending the outcome of her motion to recuse Judge Giles from her case. If her motion is granted, the Supreme Court of Texas will appoint a new judge to hear her case. This is the second disciplinary trial for Caballero this year. In August, the court found her guilty of nine contempt charges and her partner, Stuart Leeds, of seven. The trial stems from the 2011 trial in which the lawyer's client, District Court Judge Regina Arditi, was found not guilty of bribery and nepotism. This trial is deter to determine whether Caballero disrupted that trial, mostly with remarks about the visiting judge. Leeds entered an agreement earlier this month where he she acknowledged excuse me Leeds entered an agreement earlier this month where he acknowledged he engaged in misconduct during the trial and he was placed on 6 month probated suspension and was required to pay a $1000 fine. El Paso tops most cities in the nation when it comes to personal income growth. That's according to numbers that were just released by the US Bureau of Economic Analysis. Personal income rose in 2011 in all of the nation's 366 metropolitan statistical areas for the first time since 2007. But personal income especially rose here in Texas. Several cities, including El Paso, Odessa, Midland, Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio, saw income growth of more than 10%. That's well above the national average of 5.2%. A new justice has been appointed to the Texas Supreme Court. Governor Rick Perry today tapped his chief of staff, Jeffrey Boyd, to fill the post that was left vacant when Dale Wainwright resigned in late September. 
Boyd will join the state's highest civil court on December 3rd. His term will expire at the end of 2014. Boyd is a former attorney from Austin. El Paso's mayor got tested for HIV today. Mayor John Cook said he made the decision to get tested publicly in honor of World AIDS Day, which is coming up on Saturday. He hopes that his example will inspire others to get tested. There's a very simple test. It takes about 10, 15 minutes of their time. It's a confidential test, uh, and it doesn't hurt. It's very non-invasive. I mean, you just do a, um, a swab of your mouth. If you would like to get tested for HIV, you can do it for free this Thursday. International AIDS Empowerment is teaming up with La Fe Care Center to offer the testing at Premier Cinemas inside of Bassett Center from 10 until 7. Everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. We've got a lot more coming your way. That's right. Up next, we'll have some good news for military students trying to obtain their college degrees. A lot of financial help may be headed your way. Plus, move over Harvard. UTEP is leading the way when it comes to some science research that could change our future. Harvard, MIT, those institutions of higher learning will learn to play second fiddle to UTEP. That's right, because UTEP is taking the lead in a future field of science. Russ Pappas joins us now with more on this story. Russ? Nanotechnology. In simple terms, it's the science of all things that are really, really small. And in particular, nanoparticles. They're everywhere. And the chemistry department at UTEP is studying them to find out if they're good or bad for us humans. Nanoparticles are anything that measure from 1 to 100 nanometers in length. One nanometer equals one billionth of a meter. In other words, they cannot be seen individually, but in extremely large quantities, they resemble very fine powder. Professor Jorge Gardia Torres Day is studying these tiny objects. He says they can be found everywhere, from automobile exhaust to facial creams and sunblock. In 10 more years, nanotechnology is going to be used everywhere. And it's going to be a $3 trillion business. From computers to medicine to food production, this new technology is going to change our future. And with that, UTEP just received a $24 million grant to study nanoparticles, particularly how they affect, good or bad, the plants we will be eating. We don't know if these nanoparticles are going to be toxic to, to us, to the environment. We're investigating the biotransformation of these nanoparticles inside the food chain. And also, we are trying to determine if the toxicity of the nanoparticles. The professor, his staff, and students are following the nanoparticles through the plant's growth from start to finish. To do that, they're using a powerful cryoelectric microscope. It's one of only six in the entire world. They are very small particles. The professor's goal is to assess the risks and, if needed, suggest safety standards. Every technology has uh, uh, good things and bad things, but uh, I feel very, very proud that we are trying to investigate if nanotechnology, which is one of, one of the best technologies going to be used in the, in the future, is going to have some toxic effects. UTEP received all that money in 2008, and it will be another five to ten years before the results of the professor's work is known. The world will have to wait, 
Live from the studio, Russ Pappas, News Channel 9. And there is help on the way for military students and their dependents to complete their college degrees. UTEP and EPCC will receive $1.29 million. The two colleges will devise a simpler path for a college degree for military servicemen and women, their families, veterans, and civilians. By examining which military bases typically transfer personnel to Fort Bliss, UTEP's identified a number of public higher education institutions across the U.S. as potential collaborators to create a network for military and civilian personnel to transfer credits seamlessly and finish a degree.